our next speaker is Franny Preston uh, from the Invasive Species, uh, I'm sorry, the Invasive Plant Council, and she is the Invasive Species Outreach Coordinator at the University of Kentucky. So let us welcome Franny Preston. And Franny, you have until 1010 now. All right, thanks, Kendall. I'll go ahead and get my screen shared. All right, so thank you all for inviting me to come talk today. As Kendall said, I am the Invasive Species Outreach Coordinator at the University of Kentucky. And I'm gonna be actually be not be talking about native plants, but talking about invasive plants and how we're assessing them in the state. All right, so I'm sure you all are all too familiar with our big invasive plant problem that we have. Um, I have here pictured bush honeysuckle. Um, I'm sure everyone's favorite. And we've got a ton of invasive plants, unfortunately, in the state, but they all kind of act in different ways. Um, and some of them are more prolific, some of them are less prolific. And so for management reasons and uh, for research purposes, we wanted to categorize all of our invasive plants um, into a list. Um, and if you aren't familiar with invasive plants, um, when we're talking about invasive plants in this presentation, we're talking about non-native plants that are causing harm to the environment or humans or both. All right, so like I said, the plants that we have as invasive, they needed some categorization. And so the most recent categorization or listing that was done was in 2013 by the Kentucky Exotic Pest Plants Council, which is now called the Kentucky Invasive Plant Council. So this was a group of experts that worked together on this really great list. It's got about 90 different species listed as severe threat, significant threat, lesser threat, or watch list. And so this kind of shows all of the different species that are the most problematic um, and just kind of how disruptive they are. But as I said, um, this list was done in 2013. And so it needs an update. And so we're working on reassessing, um, making a new assessment for the list. And there's a few different reasons that we needed to do that. One, as I mentioned, was time. So this list was completed in 2013. And um, unfortunately, since 2013, the past 11 years, a lot of these species have probably gotten more prolific, maybe some of them less so, but a lot of them probably are more widespread, probably causing more damage and may need to be reassessed. Um, also, we wanted to make an assessment that was evidence-based or literature-based, and I'll talk a little bit about why later, but that was one of the changes that we wanted to do with the reassessment. With a literature-based assessment, it'll really help to benefit um, management decisions, both for homeowners and also people land managing land. And then it will also help the public know what or what not to plant in their yard. Okay, so when we were deciding um, how we were gonna go about this new assessment, we looked at a couple other different states. Different states have different assessment methods that they use, but we chose to focus on Florida's and Ohio's because they're within the same region and they both got some really great assessments. Some great things about these two states and their assessments are that they are evidence-based, they're science-based. Um, Florida, which was actually developed by the Southeast Invasive Plant Council, also includes some surveys that are done by land managers about how prolific these plants are in certain areas. And these states can actually use their plant, their plant assessment list because they are evidence-based. They can use them to create legislation, which is something that might be a goal in the future for our reassessment. All right, so how are we actually doing the assessing for Kentucky? Well, we took those two states, we kind of ran a few species through their assessments and decided um, what we were going to take from each of those assessments that were relevant to our state, the certain questions and categories. Um, and so far, we have been reviewing the species that are on the 2013 list that I showed a couple of slides ago. 
We've assessed about 20 species so far. And we're hoping that when this, all of the species are assessed and we created this new assessment, that it'll be used for educational materials for a whole host of different reasons. And how do we actually go about the assessment? Well, as I said, it's literature-based, it's evidence-based. And there's a few different categories that we look at when we are assessing. So we are finding evidence for each of these different categories about the different species. The first one that we look at is distribution. How widespread is the species throughout the state? How widespread is it maybe in the surrounding states or within the Southeast region? The next category that we look at is potential. So there's questions in this category that we find research for, such as how many viable seeds does it produce per year? Does it reproduce vegetatively? Is it spread via birds or wind? Questions like that. The next category that we look at is impacts. So how um, has research sh shown this species impacting native plants? How has it shown to be impacting wildlife or humans, urban landscaping, recreation? There's a whole bunch of different questions for impacts. And the final category that we find the evidence for is management. So this includes questions such as, do management methods even exist? Are they effective? And we find all of our um, research, mainly I use Google Scholar or UK libraries, but, but basically it's a big literature review. And we find um, all of the evidence or lack of evidence for each of these species based on um, regionally or um, most helpfully state-specific research. And then we also, for the distribution questions, we use Nmaps and iNaturalist. And this is where all of you come into play. You all can actually help with our assessments when you're out in your backyard looking at plants or going to natural areas, going to your local park, driving down the road spot your invasive species, they're everywhere, put them on iNaturalist, and that actually really helps us because we can use it for our assessment when finding distribution. And we actually have an iNaturalist group that you can join. Um, it's called Invasive Plants of Kentucky, pretty easy one to remember. All right, so I wanted to say thank you um, to Jason Brown, who is a student at UK who is the other person doing this assessment. It's not just me. And then also Dr. Ellen Crocker, Crocker, Dr. Matt Springer, and then the Kentucky Invasive Plant Council, who have all been a part of developing this new assessment. And then thanks to our funding, the Richard King Mellon Foundation, and then also to UK. Then I wanted to do a quick shout out. If any of you all are involved in invasive species management or environmental education, maybe you wanted to combine the two, we've actually got some training programs coming up where you can learn all about invasive plants and then all about how to teach other people about them. You can scan that QR code and sign up for that. I think we've got a couple minutes for questions. So if anyone has any questions now, feel free to ask or you can shoot me an email. I've got my email listed down below. Thank you so much, Franny. We do have one question from Jim Sheff. I'll read okay. it to you. Um, I've noticed that Circea lespediza is being used widely in Kentucky for revegetation following road work, both interstate and state roads. There are now big swaths of Circea monoculture along major roadside. I know the species is restricted in several states. Are there any tools in Kentucky to keep state and federally funded road work from using Circea for revegetation? That's a great question. Um, I'm not sure about that specific species. I do know that there's really not a great way to prohibit these plants yet in Kentucky. Um, like I said, the other, like you said too, there's other states with. Um, legislation that they can use against these species and we don't really have a system set up for that yet in Kentucky. Um, so that's one of the main reasons we're doing this assessment is hopefully we can get on that way. Um, but the best way you personally can help with issues like that is just to tell everyone you know and to help find native alternatives or non-invasive alternatives instead. That's a good question. <laughs> 